The Santa Cruz County Arts Commission presents its fifth annual Profile Performance to honor its Artist of the Year. This year's recipient is Maestro George Baratti. Mr. Baratti is acclaimed for outstanding achievements and meritorious distinction in the world of music. The quality of his work is recognized internationally. His musical accomplishments have played an important role in increasing Santa Cruz County's visibility as a community which nurtures and supports artistic creativity, development, and growth. Maestro Baratti has performed and recorded with the London Philharmonic, Oslo Philharmonic, Vienna State Opera Orchestra, Honolulu Symphony Orchestra, and Philadelphia Orchestra, among others. Maestro Baratti was cellist with the San Francisco Symphony under Pierre Mont and cellist with the California String Quartet. He has been music director of the Baratti Chamber Orchestra of San Francisco and music director of the Honolulu Symphony and Opera from 1950 until 1968. And now here is Chair of the County Arts Commission, Robert Corns, to introduce tonight's program. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like, to, I'd like to welcome you all on behalf of the Santa Cruz County Arts Commission to the uh, profile performance presented by the 1988 Risk of the Year Award. Before we get to the real business of the evening, I'd like to take a, a moment to thank the uh, people who helped uh, put this event on, specifically the staff of the County Parks and uh, Open Space and Cultural Services Department, especially Sandra Smith, the Cultural Affairs Coordinator, along with uh, many volunteers who have uh, allowed us to move forward with the very, what I'm sure you find is a very successful evening. Five years ago, the County Arts Commission began this program of acknowledging a person in the arts in the county who lives here, whose special contributions to the arts are excellent, as uh, noted on our local level, as noted on the regional and national levels, and uh, also someone who has given a great deal to the community while living here. For 1988, we have chosen a man fits all these. Uh, he has lived in Central Europe, on our East Coast, on our West Coast, in Hawaii, and for the last, I think, 18 years here in Santa Cruz County. During this evening, you'll learn much about him. I think you'll appreciate him more than ever. And I needn't say much now, but we'd just like to to you, Maestro George Baratti.
It is my privilege to um, introduce to you various people who are in our audience tonight who are um, going to present you with a number of proclamations and commendations. And so, let us begin. Our first presenter, um, Field Representative Kim Keasley, who is representing State Senator Henry Mello, has a proclamation. Our next presenter is Supervisor of the 5th District, Chair of the Santa Cruz County Board of Supervisors, Joe Chair. Well, on behalf of the Santa Cruz County Board of Supervisors, let me welcome you all here. This is a stunning turnout this evening. And I would like you to join me first in commending the Santa Cruz County Arts Commission, who is celebrating the fifth year of the uh, award that we're here to present this evening to the maestro, and I think that that's a tremendous achievement for a half a decade of success in what has now become an institution in our community. So my commendations to the Arts Commission on behalf of the Board of Supervisors. Honoring uh, the maestro this evening, I think, is very special to all of us because I think it is symbolic 
of the uniqueness of Santa Cruz County and the richness of the people that have made Santa Cruz the beautiful place that it is today. I think for all of us who live in Santa Cruz and for the Santa Cruz County Board of Supervisors, we must never forget that the arts and the performing arts and culture in our community are as vital to the quality of our life as any other aspect of the services and the essential elements that make living in Santa Cruz the special thing that it is to each of us. So on behalf of the Santa Cruz County Board of Supervisors, Maestro, I would like to just share with you a couple of the comments that we would like to pay tribute to you because I think it speaks highly of yourself and the commitment that you've made to our community. Whereas George Barati, world-renowned cellist, conductor, and composer, has been named 1988 Artist of the Year by the Santa Cruz County Arts Commission, and whereas a longtime resident of Soquel, George Barati came to the area in 1971 to be music director and conductor of the Santa Cruz County Symphony, a post he held until 1980. And whereas under George Barati's skilled guidance and leadership, the Santa Cruz County Symphony rose to greater musical heights. And whereas George Barati's works have been honored and recognized by his excellence through his inclusion in Who's Who in the World, Who's Who in America, and Who's Who in Music. And whereas now, therefore, I do hereby join with the Santa Cruz County Arts Commission in recognizing George Barati for his vast contributions to the Santa Cruz County's musical, cultural, and distinguished musical events throughout the world. Congratulations, my friend. On behalf of my fellow board members and the musicians of the symphony, I have the honor to present this gift to George in token of our thanks for his 10 years as our maestro, 1971-1980. This is simple to open all. You hold the bar. Yeah. More music <laughs> I can I do it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do it now. Oh, 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 Gene, this is oh. not my music printed here. No. 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 Uh, when it gets printed, I'll put it in the tissue. The tissue paper is here. Oh, it's, oh, it's engraved. It's engraved. I love those things. Beautiful. Practice. I'm going to take it away from <laughs> And now, a very special commendation to be read by uh, the cultural affairs specialist, Sandra Smith. I found out that George Barati had a special friend in James Michener, the writer, and tracked him down, and here's a letter from him. During the happy years when I was working in Hawaii, one of the recurring pleasures were the musical programs conducted by my friend George Barati, who had both a fine ear for the classics and an interest in more modern music. I was one of the many faithful followers, and I enjoyed George as much personally as I did musically. He inspired the rest of us with his tireless dedication to art and his delight in bringing good things to Hawaii. It was a privilege to be with him, and I have, in subsequent years, followed his career with enthusiasm and approval. I am most pleased to hear that he is being honored, and I add my own congratulations. And it's signed warmly, James A. Michener. He's distinguished visiting professor at the University of Miami.
very much. May I say a few words, Mr. Ransom? First of all, we have to build a new wall in our house to hang all these beautiful pieces. <laughs> but I'm very deeply touched and I feel truly honored, dear friends, speakers, and friends who are here in the audience, because this is a kind of honor I think every creative artist is very happy to accept, and it very seldom happens that it's such a complete occasion as this one is. And I think that the main point I want to raise, that many things I could tell you, but I think we have wonderful musicians who will play for, for you, play my music, which is more important. But the one issue that keeps coming back to me is that one receives many honors in one's life, if one is lucky, and I've been quite lucky, I must say, but very seldom does one get a gift that is truly honoring the creative part of one. And I'm speaking about the fact that this occasion has been arranged by the Arts Commission as part of the honoring the, this year's creative artist. To have an occasion where you can hear the music and can either appreciate it or not, as the case may be, but to be exposed to it is a very unique way of handling this. And I think this nation should learn something from Santa Cruz County to see how it how should be done. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much for patience while we're rearranging there for a few. I want to steal just a few moments from the ministry. I might go to Roddy if I could. First of all, we the commission would like to make a little, a very special thank you to Father Larry of Resurrection Church for being such a gracious host for us tonight. So. And now the program does state that uh, there will be a slide presentation by Maestro Barati. But before we start, we have one more competition for you, one very special one. It's like the Academy Awards, you know, when um, some of the special presenters cannot be there in person, they send themselves on tape or videotape. There's a very special tape for you, Maestro Barati, from someone that you know, from U.S. Senator Daniel Finway. Today, the state of Hawaii is the home of the Honolulu Symphony Orchestra, one of the finest symphony orchestras in the United States. The man who was involved in the process of developing the Honolulu Symphony Orchestra is the distinguished gentleman you are honoring this evening, Maestro George Barati. He was the maestro of our symphony at a time when dollars were scarce and when the symphony orchestra was performing in a high school auditorium. Through his persistence, his personality, and his energy, he convinced the people of Honolulu to build a world-class symphony hall. Whenever I pass our beautiful concert hall, I salute it as the house that Barati built. Present generations may not have heard of Maestro Barati, but we who were privileged to work with him are all well acquainted with his talent, his greatness, and his leadership. I am pleased to join you in wishing George Barati a happy and memorable 75th birthday. Mahalo and aloha, George. After this, only two choices are possible. I should run for senator, which I may not do, <laughs> or give up. <laughs> I may need some light, though. May I just make a couple of remarks about the music itself? The first piece on the program, you may or may not have seen the program, though, is a chant to Pele, Pele being the goddess of fire and volcano of Hawaii. And you may have noticed, or may have, may not have noticed, that she appeared in person in the form of a style, a fire truck outside. <laughs> now, if you didn't believe it, that was Pele. <laughs> Some of us believe it. That is no way, and I do, I'm sure. Secondly, at the program, this is such a concert of celebration, I thought that each of you present should get some kind of music that you may like. So we try to put together a program that is varied in my styles and in the world's styles, from quasi-popular to the quasi-very serious. So whatever you get is what you get. <laughs> and about the slides, before we start the slides, let me just say that Ruth and I, by the way, I think Ruth, you should stand up. My wife, Ruth. sessions and Copeland, Einstein, an old friend of mine in Princeton, Aldous Huxley, Joseph Sigeti, Stokowski, Leonard Bernstein, Menotti, Heifetz, Rubinstein, all of whom came to our house for dinner, by the way. 
Uh, so we have known them quite well, many ways, many what they didn't like to eat. <laughs> Claire Booth Luce, Prince, Crown Prince Akihito and Michiko, who gave me a beautiful pair of cuff things, by the way, for a concert. Um, Betty Goodman, Eartha Kitt, Isaac King, Tassaus, then President Eisenhower, President Nixon, Lyndon Johnson, Adley Stevenson, uh, Ambassador McConaughey in Korea, Rosemary Clooney, Mel Ferrer, Sinatra, Deborah Carr, just to mention a very few. <laughs> and there are many others, but as I said, uh, I never thought of taking pictures. Actually, there were some pictures some of some of these people, but not by me, and I don't own them. Newspapers and so on may have them. Now, as to the uh, slides, as you know, even conductors and composers have to be born. So we start right there. <laughs> And then start growing and do many things. Shall we move on? <laughs> my father, who was a corporal in the Honduran army, my vengeance was later I became a sergeant in the American army by choice. My mother and my older brother and I are this little one. This is a sport club. I'm in the middle of it in a sitting position. The closest friends who were athletes, we ran mostly, not from the teachers only. <laughs> Well, I was a cellist already, and I think it looks like, like King Kamehameha more than a <laughs> cellist. <laughs> this is the Franz Liszt Conservatory in Budapest, a side view of the main entrance. This is a, the Liszt Square, and if you look hard on the middle upper portion, there's a sitting uh, sculpture of, uh, of Liszt you are going to see it in a moment. This is Liszt sitting up on top. He is the mentor of the conservatory. Still around, I played on his piano on the top floor of the conservatory. I was allowed once to hit it, but I feel very bad. It's a very bad pianist anyway. This is the Royal Palace in Hungary, and there was a villa above it where we played many a synchronic concert, and one saw it over there. It has a different function now than it used to be there. Another detail from the conservatory wall. Very elegant inside of red marble, gold and red and glorious. Same picture, only moved over about two inches since I last saw it. <laughs> this, I believe, is the, the other concert hall in Budapest downtown near the Danube called the Vigado or the pleasure place, the place where you can enjoy, your, enjoy yourself. This is the U.S. Army, I'm a corporal, and as you see, I was a conductor, so I was very important to, to be uh, drawn by another military man. This is in Louisiana, by the way. This is Pierre Monteux, under whom I played in San Francisco Symphony for three and a half years, and his birthday is one day after mine. If the picture were complete, you would see me on his left. He was giving me a slice of cake in about a minute, because we shared the birthday party. Uh, the chamber orchestra I formed in my years in San Francisco from 1946 to 50. Actually, it survived my departure for Honolulu, and I came back for two or three years to continue. It was the first chamber orchestra in San Francisco, in fact, on the West Coast, except Los Angeles. And those of you who go to concerts know that today there are probably eight of them in San Francisco alone fighting each other. I was the one who wrote the union rules because at that time, they didn't know what the chamber orchestra meant. Now they know. In the army, suffering Louisiana. Louisiana. <laughs> Hot. When I was invited to, to Hawaii, I knew nothing about Hawaii. I said, I'm going to come under one condition, so the guest conduct in January 1950. If I can't meet the one person I know in Hawaii, I used to be a swimming champion myself, a waterfall player as a kid. And I said, I only know the name of Duke Kahanamoku, who became Olympic champion. And so the first week we were there, the dinner party was arranged. That is Duke Kahanamoku, his wife, and my wife was left off his picture. The original has her. I apologize. It was not my intention. Then the youth concerts began. As you heard, 
uh, from various sources earlier tonight, we built immediately upon my arrival, the idea was that you must develop audiences for the future. True in every place, every time. It's true today in this county, as you already heard. So we got into schools, and this is one of the uh, arrivals to the council. The Catholic schools sent two or three buses each time. And as you see, I am the inspiration. Oh, I think it's misplaced, but anyway, I said it for a moment. <laughs> Ansel Adams came to town at the invitation of uh, the Bishop Band, which is now First National Band, to do an anniversary picture book. And I was selected one of the six or eight human beings in the picture. The rest were all nature scenes by like wonderful Ansel Adams. This is Ansel's one of two pictures. This is the other one. The left, right hand smoking, holding a cigarette is, should be cut off. I don't believe in it. <laughs> this is the Honolulu Symphony in its first performance of the Beethoven Ninth Symphony. The chorus in the back shows you. And this is one of the most important moments. It was about the first or second sold out house in about my, my third or fourth season until then we grew step by step from almost nothing to sold out houses. Uh, Captain Kangaroo on the right standing <laughs> did a, a pop concert with us in the outdoor place, the Alamoana Center. It's about 20,000 people gathered. We expected six or seven or eight thousand. 20,000 people, you wouldn't believe the sight. And I think I'm conducting. <laughs> this is an old friend of yours and mine, Jack Denny, and this is in Hawaii. This was before Jack came here to perform and raise money for us, and we became instant friends. In fact, he and Ruth became instant friends to the extent that the phone would ring 7 a.m. many times, and this gruff voice would say, is Ruth there? And at 7 a.m., I think the husband has a right to ask a strange voice, who is it, please? <laughs> and he would say, never mind, I want to talk to Ruth. I said, who is this, please? This is Jack. I said, Jack, who? <laughs> oh, Jack, Jack Benny. He said, Jack, why do you say so? What's the problem? He has to sound bad. I have a call at Las Vegas. I'm performing tonight. I have to ask Ruth what to take. <laughs> Ruth was the, the, the mentor of Jack Benny to, to the end of his life as to what violence. <laughs> this is the Waikiki shell that I also helped to build, even though I didn't approve the size of the shell itself, which was enormous. It could probably see 2,000 people on, on, on the shell, on the, on the stage, without any problem. And if you can see and you cannot see, on the, right, on, on the conductor's left, on your right, is George Shearing playing the piano playing a Mozart concert, he played jazz at the second half of the concert. But the audience is probably 10, 12,000, and we even made money on these concerts, believe it or not. I mean, legal money. <laughs> on the left is Isaac Stern and symphony functionaries, and I'm pointing at an ice design of, I think, a violin Jack Benny, the previous picture, was made about two weeks or three weeks prior to this concert with Isaac Stern, a soloist, and the remains of that slowly melting violin that remained for Jack about the size of a large human being, like six, seven feet, is still there. So this was the, the event that Isaac enjoyed, that very old friend, Isaac Stern and Jack Benny. Carmen Dragon who was very well known in those years as the standard R symphony conductor, came to Hawaii. This is our house looking out to the side. The front was toward the ocean. To the right was uh, Pearl Harbor. The left was the beautiful Manoa Valley. Ruth and I appeared many times in many functions. This was one of the very important local uh, monthly magazines and we were featured. Young, young kids, it was about two years ago. <laughs> the family was about five years ago. <laughs> Donna, the younger one, next to me, and Donna, with her mother. Both born in Hawaii, by the way. This is daddy, the cellist. <laughs> Donna is the larger one. The baby, Donna, mother's lap, could you believe it? 
as my son holding the flute with Lorna in between, Diamond in the back, and my son from a first marriage uh, liked music and wanted to know what the flute, what the flute was like, how, how to play a flute. This was not in Hawaii, in North Korea. It was a Western flute line just for a minute ago. This is at McDowell Colony, and the picture doesn't show very much, but I always loved to be. So this is proof to you. McDowell Colony in Petersburg, New Hampshire, is for creative artists. That's all I have from there. Another Wagner Kishar concert, uh, where the scenes, concert scenes from uh, Aida. And it's a very beautiful sight. You can see now how large that shell is. There must be on the stage a chorus of 500, an orchestra of about 100, and just disappeared. You could see 2,000 more. It's just bad. It's too big for that purpose. This is the Kaiser Dome, aluminum dome, the first geodesic dome in this country, a Kaiser design and built in five days. And he phoned me one morning and said, I want to need your help, please, at your convenience. And I'll make it a very short story. And my convenience became immediate. You come down, please, and help me build the, the, the acoustics, the stage, which I did. And when we finished, he said, now what do you want? I said, I want to perform in it. So he arranged a coast to coast show for us. The man in white is Alfred Afaka, the greatest Hawaiian singer I think ever lived, died very young. And we arranged, I arranged this program of part Hawaiian, part symphonic, alternating. And on the last piece, he would come over, walk over from a special stage, was designed for him, to our stage and sing with the orchestra. The very glorious moment of fusion of East and West each time. This was a sold out house, probably six or eight times the same program opening. Then Henry Kaiser came on stage to thank me and greet the audience and mainly thank himself as to how it was done. He promised, he promised it was going to be five days, it was like four and a half days. This is a better picture of Apaka singing with us and the sold out house. This is when Kaiser first came on stage and asked Ruth to join us. And I, I'm very fond of the story that I tell people how to understand this man who, I don't know how many of you remember him or know what he did. But during a war, he built hundreds of boats, ships, and he did whatever he wanted to do, he achieved. And once at dinner, I said to him, I sat next to him, Mr. Kaiser, how do you do this? I mean, this particular thing was built by my standing there. The, the uh, hall was not built yet, it was just walls were going up. And he said, now what do you want, my boy? I said, I want to uh, raise the platform, the stage is too low, cut out these steps, that should be over there, straighten out the front, it's too, too curved, so the light should be there and there and there. And I kept on saying things, and somebody behind me kept writing. This was late afternoon. The next morning, the next morning was all finished. So I said to Kaiser a few weeks later, Mr. Kaiser, just how do you do this? He said, my boy, I just lean like an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> so I told Dan in Norway, when he was young. <laughs> this is in Washington where I was performing opera, commenting opera. This is opera in Hawaii, and I don't remember the names, uh, but Farujo is the Senate School Opera stage director on the right. And uh, Ruth, can you Frank remember? Poretta. Poretta on the left, isn't it? Yeah. Frank Poretta, who's very famous today, on the left. And the rest I'm sorry to say I don't remember. John Browning, one of the big piano names today, he was a young kid. He just won a competition, I forgot now what, and he became very well known in those years. Henry Cow sitting with us in the big picture window in a foggy day, I guess. Don't see the background. This was in 1964, by which time I became uh, both very well known, quite loved, and also quite notorious. And this was a time that we were finishing the concert hall, just building it. And the controversy was enormous, in fact, Mr. Kuchira might want to enjoy the fact he said that I 
ที่ติดคนรุ่นไหนโดนไปไปเอ่อการคุยผิดชินีเรื่องที่พ่อท่านสุดพ่อเด็กเขาสุดพ่อ We tried for 20 years or 15 years to build one, and were unable to get either the land or the money or both. Finally, we lost the last chance for this particular space that was the final space open in the middle of downtown Honolulu, kitty corner from the academy, wonderful academy bar. And the editor of the paper, morning paper, called me up, George, we lost. I'm going to try one more editorial tomorrow. Help me write it. So we chatted for an hour. I hope there are no mayors in this community. <laughs> chatted for an hour, and I said many things to him off record, discussing what, how to approach this editorial. And next morning, every radio station, every and TV station called me for dinner, six o'clock in the morning. And I said, what, what's going on? Somebody said, I mean, did you see the morning paper? No, I didn't. Go out, get it, you call it back in a half, hour, half an hour. I go out, and I think that's up to a little editorial page, or maybe a front page, Barati, quote, the mayor and the city council are culturally ignorant, quote. <laughs> <laughs> and Mayor Blaisdell called me an hour later and said, George, we had a supervisory meeting today, be my guest, come down. I went down. The symphony lawyer was there. He said, George, no guns, no guns. He said, I'm not shoot. And the mayor took me to this wall, the blueprint of the wrestling arena where it is built today. Large, complete center of this large two city block area. And uh, underneath, in this completely finished blueprint, under that, kind of a hand scratched blue pencil, a rectangle. And he says, Council Hall. The mayor says, You see, George, you got it. And our lawyer said, It's freshly built, isn't it? <laughs> An afterthought. But we built the Council Hall at that spot because of this editorial. <laughs> <laughs> It's a true story. You can see it in the paper. <laughs> That's George Sheely. You can see it much better now there on my left, on my left. Is left. Uh, in 1962, <laughs> we decided our two growing daughters should go to school somewhere else, not just in Hawaii, which might be a little bit you know, far in the middle of the Pacific. And the Pigeon English might not be the best English to learn, although they didn't learn Pigeon English. So we went to Europe to live for a couple of years. And this was my final concert prior to the departure. And as you see, I couldn't see or breathe. I had to be let out by two sponsors on two sides. It was a wonderful honor. Uh, farewell by the governor of Hawaii, Bill Quinn, who was a personal friend, and who sang with the orchestra a number of times. I wonder if you could get this to do major to come and sing with us. <laughs> Uh, but he was a very wonderful Irish tenor, and this was a farewell in his office. The concert hall, rather sad front, but very lovely inside. Stravinsky, one of our guest conductors, when I left for him for Europe for a couple of years, I arranged guest conductors, one of the first was Stravinsky, and he called me from Los Angeles, his wife, and he and Kraft, Robert Kraft, his assistant, came. And he said, uh, he, she, she said, he's not feeling well. He may, have had to, may not be able to walk, so please, nobody should come out to the airport, just you and one photographer. So we did that, and I drove him around. It was a wonderful two or three days with him because he was very open, and we had a great deal of time, private discussion while his wife was doing things that why is it you? <laughs> this is in Heidelberg, the, Austria, the German American Music Festival one summer. This is a conductor. This is in Korea, in a glorious spot. There may be another picture. The, the beautiful buildings are on this side behind the orchestra, and there is a large audience in this, in this wonderful court, very lovely designs and obvious uh, lines of the 
uh, Southeast Asian architecture. This is, I think, in a geisha house. It's a far better picture where my wife and I are the only uh, Westerners, but I am between two geishas, and my wife is on the, sitting on the extreme right. And you can see how the Japanese women behave with this lovely wife of mine. Pushed her to the side. <laughs> Japan Orchestra Tokyo Symphony, I think, conducting just a detail. This is the Tokyo Philharmonic, which I took on a coast-to-coast -coast tour once in Japan, which is about six months, so it's not like America, and took them once on a southern tour to Osaka and Kyoto. A very willing orchestra, very able, very willing, one of seven in Tokyo alone, and I was the only American, at least for many years, if not now, who was allowed to conduct all of them on one tour, because the system in in Japan was at that time that one orchestra had a guest conductor, no other orchestra talked to that person while he was there. A complete monopoly for the moment. It's Busan, Korea, a reception committee of orchestra members. We had a concert with a terrible, terrible piano that kept collapsing under the pianist's hands. <laughs> and he kept pushing it back. I don't mean a pitch, I mean the leg kept collapsing. <laughs> The pitch wasn't there to begin with. <laughs> Taeko Fuji, a Japanese soprano opera singer. My Berlin debut before the concert, they pressed my tailcoat and gave me coffee, tea, or milk, and I had to wait in this dressing room. And I might tell you, it was beautifully lit as you see. And when I got out, I expected to go through various un entrance rooms, entree places, before I got to the stage. Instead, they opened the door and I was on the stage. <laughs> that was a real, honest to goodness, shock to me. Because you expect, you know, to do certain things to yourself, take a deep breath and say, ready. <laughs> Instead, I was on the stage doing this. <laughs> There with the menu hand with daughter Donna and Lorna and a friend. Same discussing his program for San Francisco. I advised him and he wonderfully changed the program at my recommendation and he learned the score by heart gloriously six months later. Very grateful to me. In fact, he found us from London to be his guest. This is the Honolulu Symphony Tour Orchestra. When I arrived, the orchestra played in Honolulu about six concerts a year and nothing else. When I left, we played 106 concerts a season, and including opera. On every island, we played 60 to 80 youth concerts a year. And I formed in my first year a 36-piece tour orchestra. We flew two planes. It's not Aloha, luckily, like it's Hawaiian. <laughs> uh, one plane flew the equipment, and this plane flew us and one double bass, that is your idea. And the orchestra was 36 because there were 37 seats on the DC-3, one for the bass. <laughs> Same picture, Pusan. This is a detail with Jack Benny in Santa Cruz, that his concert was over the other side of the mountain. But this is Jack playing and raising it was my first concert with this orchestra. We raised enough money for the first two or three years of deficits, which were inevitable to come. John Cage, two young men, and one of the programs in Santa Cruz. And thank you very much.
Thank you. 